Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a digital rebar video. Uh, this topic is going to be a Kubernetes install, actually more, more correctly a K3S install. I'm going to be using Linode and I had a special request which was to show a complete zero to Kubernetes running install. Uh, K3S is faster, so I'm going to use that for this example. Uh, and it's going to show you a whole bunch of interesting things. It's going to show you how to build a workflow that goes from discovery all the way through to a finished state. Uh, it's also going to show you me using something uh, called the classifier, which is in our libraries, uh, but we haven't talked a lot about, so this will be a chance for you to see it, and you can actually watch me build this whole process. Um, and because I'm going to do it using Linode, you could do this on bare metal, of course. I'm doing it in Linode because it's going to be super fast and easy, uh, and I have some stack scripts that sort of automate the whole process. Uh, and I haven't shown K3S on Linode, so yay! Tons and tons of really interesting stuff. So hang on tight, we've got about 10 minutes of things to show you to make all this stuff go. So I'm gonna start with this uh, DRP Kubernetes stack script that I built. Um, it does things like open the firewall, it installs digital rebar, it also creates some profiles, um, uh, it actually brings in, all does all the crib Kubernetes install pieces, it even builds a custom workflow. So cool stuff, we're gonna deploy it and uh, nice thing about this is it's all pretty well set i don't just have to make a couple of choices like what data center i want to use i'm going to use about four gigs of ram and i need a password so all great and so this process is going to go through and and do this um kubernetes install uh sorry drp install on that machine and it'll install, bring up bring it up get drp going get kubernetes going um, so all reasonable things. What I'm doing here, we have some other videos showing how to build this infrastructure from scratch. Uh, it has some, we have some examples of how to install Kubernetes. This is really just putting together a couple of those pieces. If you haven't seen it, um, the Kubernetes pieces are in digital rebar provision content uh, under crib. And the work I'm showing you is actually right now a pull request for uh, K3S. K3S is a fork of Docker, a fork of Kubernetes made by the Rancher team. Um, it's very lightweight, it's for edge, it's specialized stuff. A nice thing that I like about it is it basically we reused a whole bunch of crib workflows to self build the cluster, elect a master, create the server, pass a token around, install container D, write all the things you need. Um, but because it's really lightweight, it's super fast to bring up. So got a sort of a win-win. Uh, we've been calling the combination K3 eighths, uh, K3-8 or slash eight, that's sort of funny. All right, I'm just stalling for time while we wait for this system to get built. Uh, let's see where we are. Might actually be all the way there. So let me bring up that system. Normal, normal digital rebar bring up, that looks great. Uh, and while you might know us for bare metal, the process is we have allow you to join containers and VMs and stuff like that. Of course, we're not booting it, we're just attaching to the system while it's running. In this case, we've already got a workflow. Um, all the pieces and parts came in, that's really cool. But I built this thing, this K3S Linode, um, and because I don't have the latest crib, it's showing an error, which is exactly what you want. Hey, this isn't right. Um, and then what's going to oops, what's going to happen is I'm going to get this black stage not there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually upload uh, the content. So this is my my clone of uh, digital rebar provision content. I was working in crib. I think I've got all my stuff committed. I do. I'm ways ahead. And all I have to do is I'm going to um, bundle this con these contents, which is going to basically create a YAML file with the whole crib content packs, all those parameters and stages and templates, all that stuff that you bundled in. And then I'm going to tell it to update the existing crib bundle uh, with a new one. So that is going to run in the background and update my crib. And when I do that, this, this stage, um, the stage that I'm depending on for this workflow will be there. So we'll show that. But to do this work, I actually need to do something else. Um, I need to classify machines. So classifying, I'm gonna use the tip version. Classifying 
is this uh, set of stages we have that inspect information about the machine during a workflow and then make other decisions. And you can make all sorts of different decisions about how you want the system to go. Uh, and let me show you what that would look like. So in this, we have a specialized, um, I'm not using the special admin menu. I'm just gonna switch to this. You can do this yourself. Nothing magical, whoops. I have to spell classifier right there. C-L-A-S-S-I-F-1. That's not at all what I wanted. Ah, let's see. All right, what am I doing wrong? Machines. Oh, it's classifier. Whew, boy. All right, so classifier. In this case, it's showing me nothing very exciting. Um, I'm using the global profile, and I'm going to add a rule that says always. And I have different rules, like I can pick different subnets, MAC addresses, serial numbers, stuff like that. Yay, I'm going to say for I always. So if I picked uh, for MAC address, I could actually build a filter of MAC addresses, take actions based on MACs, or if I was in a subnet, or if I had inventory values, so I could say if I have six drives or you know a gazillion gigabits of RAM, uh, or gigabytes, however you buy your RAM, I don't care. Whatever works for you. Anyway, so this case I always uh, want to, I don't want to change my workflow, that would actually alter my path. I just want to add a profile. Um, in this case, uh, we've built, we've pre-built a crib work, work uh, profile, so I'm just going to pick that one and add it. So that means when it hits this stage, the classifier stage, it's going to run this rule that always adds the crib profile. Okay, if you've been wondering, oh, how could I make that happen? And then I can add more rules and they get evaluated in order. So this uh, it looks pretty cool and pretty. It's, it's really just building JSON stuff behind the scenes. That's how computers work. So if I go into my global profile, assuming I can find it, what you're going to see in here is this is the rule I just built. Just, it's just creating a classify classification data. You can put these in profiles too. You can, there's all sorts of ways to manage them. And then one of the things in Linode, I have to open up network ports. So I have a stage that does that too. And let's uh, show you how we're going to build this stage up. Oh, uh, I keep forgetting. Same thing every single time. Here we go. So I have to, I keep building new uh, endpoints. So I have to go in, I have to export RS uh, endpoint. I have to name my endpoint so I can control it. Always helpful. So now that I've done that, I can do my upload. So let's see. This, I don't have to bundle again. And take that bundle and, and send it up. Uh, I use a whole bunch of different endpoints and build them all the time. So I, I feel like I'm always forgetting to set my RS endpoint. Um, but super handy. That's going to take a moment. Oh, it's done. That was the moment. Now you'll notice this is turned into a uh, check. So that that Linode cluster thing is, is available and it's unlocked because I created it. So actually what I want to do is I'm going to combine this Discover Linode and this uh, K3S Linode. So to do that, I really just have to add Discover. So let's add that into here. Handy. All right, so that's that. Uh, I want the runner, so let's put the runner in. It's the runner service. Good, all right. It's gonna do my SSH keys, which I don't really don't need for this. It's gonna turn on my firewall. It's going to do my K3S config, and then it's gonna be done. That's almost right. I still remember have to add in my classify stage. And so I'm gonna classify, I need to classify before I run the Kubernetes stuff. So when I build new nodes, machines here, normally they would come in unclassified, un with no profile but this will allow me to have a profile automatically. And we're gonna watch that process happen. So I need the IP address here. So I think I'm all ready. I've got my crib stuff. Ah, one more step. I need to actually uh, use my Discover Linode stage. All right, so that got set in when I, when I built the system. So Discover Linode here, not the right thing, K3S Linode. So let's fix that. K3S Linode. So what I'm doing now is now I've built a workflow that's going to go through the discovery process, classify a machine, and then install K3S. So all of the components for that workflow I've now built into a single thing. This is exactly what you would want to do if you, say, got machines from the factory, 
and wanted to be able to power them on and install a Kubernetes cluster. That's, we're helping customers do that type of thing all the time. Um, and that's what they, they'll do. They use the classifier to take those actions or they just set a default workflow that can go all the way through the process. Um, so now I'm gonna take my IP address and go back to Linode, take a stack script. I want a DRP node, so let's take that one. And I'm gonna build a couple of machines. So I provide my DRP endpoint. I've already got some videos about how this is, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I just need tiny machines for this. Uh, and I just go ahead and create it. So that's one. This is, we're gonna stagger them a little bit so you get to see it. I'll create uh, a couple of, I'll create a trio. So here we go. Same thing. IP address, CentOS, Dallas. That looks good. Password. I don't care what it is. All right. Uh, one more. Yeah, I said trio. So let's let's stick to the script. I would like to see a create three button. Linode engineers. Let's see, here we go. Oh, huh, no, it's not asking me. All right, so I just created a little three, three machine cluster. So four with the digital rebar uh, server. And now we're just waiting for the machine to show up. The K3S install is super fast. So once it gets to K3S install, it's gonna take about a minute to do that install. Um, and so the whole, whole process is quick. Uh, before I hit the refresh, it had already gone, gone through the process. Notice here, it's added that profile. Um, and then I messed up the profile, let's see if it does it. Um, so in this profile, I didn't, I was gonna remove this etcd cluster thing, but I think I fixed that, there was a bug there. Looks good, uh, it's identified the VIP, it's identified the cluster masters, and it's going through the config on the system, so uh, that looks pretty darn good as far as electing the master, no surprise. So it got a 30 second wait while it, while it comes together. Um, and we're just waiting for the system to go. Say so more machines are coming on. Oh, look, all three of our machines are here. They're going through the process pretty fast. Um, and these are gonna be on a hold wait um, until the token shows up that allows them to register for everything. Um, I have another video explaining more in detail about how, how K3S goes. Now look, it's already done. That server is up uh, and we're in wait state. So that means the work is gonna be released on these and they should be able to, yep, there you go. They brought themselves up and we have a little three node cluster. Just about as fast as you can say, I want a three node cluster. So, um, and just to show you that the cluster's working, I will uh, go ahead and here's my admin comp file, download it to my local system. I have another window here uh, where I can run kubectl. Look at that! There's my new cluster, a bright and shiny K3S cluster. Um, zero click. Right? I, I did not do any configuration on these machines. I created them and I got a cluster. Let me say that again. Zero configuration. I created them, pointed them at digital rebar so they would boot through the process and I got a cluster out. No interaction on my part to make that happen. That's what we're talking about. We talk about digital rebar building, continuously integrated data center, and zero click provisioning. That's the zero to, to, the zero to cluster thing that we're talking about. I don't care where you do it. This is really handy because, boy, that was easy. Didn't have to do a lot of configuration thought or play, and I still got all the behaviors that I needed to demonstrate even in a production data center. Hope this was helpful. Please, please come in, uh, ask us questions, come to racken.com and check out and you know, join our Slack community, ask us questions. We're happy to talk about this stuff. There's a ton of activity going on in the crib uh, 
integrations right now, and then Racken's always building interesting stuff in our library. Everything in our library is available for you with a trial license, so um, don't be shy. You can jump in and play with, with systems up to 20 machines. Everything in our library is available uh, for play, so please check it out.